Just kidding. Ah, there we go. Okay. Yes, we are recording. <laughs> okay. Um, why are we doing this? Um, and why is this changing without my anything? Debbie, you would just want to take over doing this because it's flip flopping all over the place on me. So just leave it right there. Yep, I'll take care of it. All right, thanks. Um, <clears throat> so why are we doing the seminar? I guess that's uh, question one. And I, I, and this is my personal thing, but I believe we would be doing a disservice to our students by not including sustainability in our courses. Uh, sustainable living and practices are essential to their well-being and to their future. Mm -hmm. uh, this generation, probably more than any other, is going to be impacted by global warming and resulting climate change and resource scarcity, and it's only gonna get worse. Mm -hmm. We need to communicate how sustainability in our courses uh, will help mitigate the worst effects and help them have a more livable and sustainable future. Okay, so that's my soapbox for today. Um, so we're going to go through and I'll talk a little bit about how we identify. Okay, this just jumped ahead for some reason. Um, defining sustainability, because I'm sure everybody probably on this call has a different definition. So we'll try to narrow that down a little bit. Uh, Debbie will come back and talk about sustainability literacy, uh, our green facilities, and some really great stuff we've been doing here at San Jose State. Uh, she's going to highlight that stuff. Uh, we'll have two testimonials uh, from uh, former uh, attendees, uh, and in particular, the first two are going to be Serena Alexander and Heather Duplassé, and talk about how they've incorporated sustainability into their curriculum. Uh, then we'll go back to Debbie and to Peggy to talk about the Office of Sustainability, the resources they provide, and then the library and resources they provide as well. Um, we'll then have a couple more testimonials, uh, and then we'll uh, end up the presentations with a fun exercise on how, uh, at where we're going to try to figure out how you are actually already incorporating some of the United Nations uh, sustainability development goals into your uh, into your courses right now. Uh, and then Debbie will wrap up by how you apply for the Okay. Uh, uh, can we move to the next slide? Debbie? Okay, sorry, she did. Um, so increasing the number of courses and departments, this is very important to us as a university uh, in comparison to other universities. Uh, I think we rank pretty high in this category, but uh, we would certainly like to uh, increase this number. Uh, this was one of my main objectives when it came on as faculty and residents for sustainability. And so I'm glad to see that we've actually done extremely well. Um, also to incorporate uh, diversity, equity, and inclusivity <laughs> in here because uh, the issues that we're dealing with in terms of climate change um, disproportionately affect those less fortunate. Uh, so we want to make sure that we address that uh, in, in any kind of uh, recommendations or uh, sustainability uh, modules that we uh, insert. And also, I mentioned transportation alternatives because um, if you insert trans sustainable transportation alternatives in there, there may be a different source of funding for the stipends. Um, as we mentioned, stipends will be, you know, we'll, we'll offer up to 10 uh, $500 stipends. Uh, and uh, like I say, transportation might allow us to do a few more. Um, we also would like to see you address the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. <clears throat> Excuse me, we'll be talking more about that uh, in a little bit. So let's talk about sustainability and uh, how to define it. There is no single definition, first of all. So don't feel bad if you, you know, uh, stumble around when people ask you, well, what, what's this? what do you mean by sustainability? Um, I, I'll offer you a couple of different things. Uh, one I like is the uh, is the Brundtland report from 1987, where they define sustainability as meeting the needs of the present, without compromising the ability of the future generations 
to meet their own needs. So that's that would be one way of saying it on a, on a personal basis. Uh, from a business standpoint, uh, we talk about sustainability within the circular design model, where products are designed from the get-go to be reused, recycled, or repurposed, so that at the end of the site process, uh, there is zero waste. So whatever goes in and what remains at the end becomes food for the next uh, process. Uh, all using renewable energy. Uh, the more standard definition, the technical definition, pillars of sustainability, um, which is social or equity, uh, environment and economic. And you can't, you know, if you think about, you know, you could have something that's socially good and it does well for the environment, but it doesn't have any, make any economic sense at all. You're going to have a hell of a time getting people to do it. Okay. Um, or you can have something that's good for the environment and is economically viable, but is very bad for society and for those underprivileged, uh, or economic and social, but ignores the environment. So you can see how all of these three things really need to work together in order to have true sustainability. Okay. So now I'm going to turn the agenda over to Debbie, and uh, she's going to talk to you about some of the things we've done. Great. Um, so this is actually outdated. I think I think our, our numbers are going to be a little bit higher. Um, this audit was taken in 2019. Um, number of students who graduated from a program that has adopted at least one sustainability learning outcome is about 60%. A big chunk of that is um, the College of Engineering has a 100% rate mainly because they uh, require all their students to uh, um, do 100W, and 100W is dedicated to sustainability in engineering topics. Um, so we're hoping to kind of replicate their success with other colleges as well. Um, oops. Okay, let's fast forward here. Um, again, this this audit was taken in in 2019. So so currently we have about 32 percent of our courses has have been identified um, that focus on uh, one of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, it's actually a, a a huge. It's it's the most amount of points we can get in stars. So basically, that's actually a really good metric um, for our our course catalog. Um, and today, actually, you can see which courses are identified as such with this leaf. If you go into the course catalog, you'll see this leaf with um, a note that says which SDG um, this course relates to. Um, current research, we have 13% of our faculties currently conducting research on sustainability. I think, I'll, again, I think this number is, um, is pretty conservative. Um, this, this wasn't um, a complete audit of all our research. So I think this number is actually in reality a lot higher, but 13% still is, is pretty is pretty good. Um, and 40% of our departments contain at least one faculty or staff um, member engaged in sustainability research. We have sustainability focused research centers like um, Mineta Transportation Institute, the CDR, um, and Moss Landing. Um, and this is our most recent STARS Gold certification. We It's uh, 2020, the certification lasts for three years. So we're gonna be re-upping our, our, our certification next year. Um, if you don't know what STARS is, it's the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System. It's what's used um, around the country now for evaluating universities on how well they incorporate sustainability in basically all of their departments. Um, so they, these, including academics, engagement, operations, planning and administration, and innovation and leadership. Uh, right now, we are one of six C CSUs that are certified gold, which is the second highest ranking. Um, and that puts us in the top 6% in the world. Um, um, and then these are our most recent uh, rankings. We are currently on the Sierra Club Cool Schools list of 2021. Uh, that's the most updated list. <laughs> right now we're at number 40, 54 and 12th ranked school in California. Um, we just uh, got notification that we're on the 2022 Sustainable Campus Index. We're ranked number six for master's institutions. 
And I, I literally just got this yesterday for Princeton Review uh, for 2023. Uh, we are on their list of one of the 455 most environmentally friendly colleges in the world. So we're doing a lot of really great stuff. I just think um, not a lot of people know about it. Um, so we're, we're always trying to get the word out on what SJSU is doing. Um, our facilities, just this is a really quick snapshot of what we're doing in our facilities, but right, uh, we have reduced our GHG levels to 12% before our 1990 levels. Mm -hmm. Why 1990 levels is significant? It's basically what the state of California has required um, state institutions to, to get to by 2020. So we went 12% below that. Our next, our next target is 2030. We want to get to 40% 1990 levels, but that does require a lot of work. So we're, we're working on that. Um, solar panel installations, we get a ton of questions on why we don't have solar panel and now we, solar panels on campus. And now we do. If you go down to South Campus at the park and ride lot, um, there's a, um, a solar panel installation. It doesn't look like a lot, but it actually powers all of, all of South Campus. So our camp, our, our athletic facilities down there are essentially net zero. Um, down there as well, we also have new EV charging stations. Um, there's enough for 134 um, cars there. Um, the, the added bonus is it's also cheaper to park there. So if you do have an EV charging, uh, uh, an EV and needed to charge, they actually won't even make you move it too. So that's a, another bonus. <laughs> and we're, we're currently in the process of putting in 40 stations at the 10th Street garage. Um, all our new buildings and major, major renovations since the, uh, the library have been built to LEED Gold, and LEED is also a certification for um, how energy efficient and how sustainably a building was built. Um, LEED Gold is also the second highest ranking you can get for building, so um, we're shooting for platinum next. <laughs> um, and currently now we use more recycled water oops, than we do potable water. Uh, mainly we use we use recycled water in every use that doesn't require potable right like right now we only use potable for drinking and showering and washing dishes and clothes and things like that so recycled we use it for irrigation we use it for flushing toilets in our newer buildings um, we use it in our central plant um, uh, so we're doing really really well uh, as far as saving water and then um, the CSU plastic span, uh, single use plastic span, uh, we are um, aiming to be single use plastic free by 2023. It means that we are no longer using uh, plastic straws, um, disposable plastic bags, styrofoam containers, and uh, we'll be phasing out single use, selling single use water bottles by 2023 as well. And I'm gonna hand it over to Yingwa. Hey, uh, so uh, we have launched this um, uh, faculty sustainability stipend program um, for several semesters. And the last semester, we have four awardees. Uh, they are Professor Avinda Numba and uh, Anuda that have a pursue from the School of Global Innovation and Leadership, and uh, uh, Professor Diana Eisenstark and from the Child uh, and Adolescent Development and Dr. Julianne Walker from uh, Accounting and Finance. And now uh, we would like to uh, invite um, two um, previous awardees to share their, their experience on uh, how to incorporate the sustainability in their courses. So uh, let's invite our first presenter, uh, Professor Serena Alexandra, I think. Uh, can you go? Yeah. So um, is uh, Professor Serena Alexandra here? Yes, I'm here and thank you so much for the introduction. Um, so welcome everyone, good afternoon. Uh, I come from the Department of Urban and Regional Planning. I'm an associate professor uh, and my research focuses on climate action planning. So it is natural for me to talk about sustainable urban planning and climate change and issues related to resiliency in my classes. Um, next slide, please. So Serena, while we have a chance uh, for all of the presenters, remember your your target is five to seven minutes. So okay. just to make sure everybody understands that. Okay. Thanks, Serena. Um, so I teach graduate level courses and um, many of my 
students come to the class with a vague understanding of sustainability or some understanding of sustainability. One of the first things that we do in my class is to ensure that we understand the concept of sustainability. So working on having a clear definition and ways to measure sustainability and collecting evidence for sustainability or lack thereof is one of the first steps that we take before we can think about developing policies to address sustainability problems. Next slide, please. So what are the main components of sustainable urban planning? Urban planning is a diverse field uh, and many of these dimensions involve sustainability. So for example, sustainable transportation, sustainable energy supply and demand, sustainable food production and distribution and so forth and so on. Uh, for each of these categories, there are several key themes related to sustainability. So for instance, for sustainable transportation, there is public transportation, walkable and bikeable neighborhoods, vehicle charging stations, and equitable mobility. One of the things that we do in my classes is that when we work on each of these themes um, or sub-themes, uh, we start to look at the, the main components of sustainability. Here you can see an example on the right-hand side that shows how we develop a framework for the implementation of landscape and green space um, and how we look at ecological, structural, and visual aspects, and then go into the details of developing indicators to ensure that we are making enough progress uh, towards these goals. Next slide, please. Uh, I often teach cl classes related to transportation and sustainability. Sustainable transportation is the capacity to support the mobility needs of a society in a manner that is the least damageable to the environment and does not impair the mobility needs of future generations. Transportation happens to be the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions and three important dimensions of transportation, transportation modes, infrastructures, and operations uh, are related to sustainability needs um, as they can be categorized into the three key dimensions of environment, economy, and society. Because transportation is impacted by the environment and also impacts the environment, uh, it also uh, is a big part of our economy and contributes to our society in different ways. Next slide, please. There are many ways to incorporate sustainability into planning curriculum or any other curriculum. So these are some of the things that I use in my classes, reading materials, online resources, case studies, discussions, project-based and problem-based learning opportunities, community engagement activities, role play, scenario planning, peer learning and collaboration, and also research. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Here's one of my favorite tools to incorporate sustainability into curriculum, developing engaged projects that we work with uh, local governments uh, or uh, state level governments uh, on a specific project. Here you can see an example of a project that we did uh, with, in partnership with the city of San Jose and a delivery robot company um, um, that works with the city of San Jose. Uh, the goal was to conduct an analysis of community perspectives and reactions towards sidewalk delivery robots in the city of San Jose. If you're wondering how these robots are related to sustainability, these robots can potentially play a significant role in last mile delivery. And we can, if we can use them for things like delivering food or medicine or small packages, then we can reduce freight emissions significantly, last mile emissions significantly. So the students did observations, intercept surveys, interviews with community members and stakeholder organizations, uh, and the results helped the city of San Jose take action on this. Uh, we also published the results on MTI, on Manila Transportation Institute's website, so you're welcome to check that out. Next slide, please. Another student project example that involved working with the city of San Jose was wor working to reduce emissions from freight transportation. So the students conducted a literature review analysis of plans and best practices and also did quantitative data and geospatial analysis. To understand how freight emissions are impacting various communities in San Jose and how are disadvantaged communities being impacted and what are the strategies that the city of San Jose can take to mitigate freight emissions. The results of this analysis is actually going to be incorporated in the city's um, downtown um, plan, transportation plan, uh, and also uh, the results have been published on Manado Transportation Institute's website. Next slide, please. 
And this is my last slide. I wanted to, again, one more time mention that my research focuses on climate action planning. Uh, and in my classes, I also talk about building climate resilience. Uh, I discuss um, topics related to mitigation of emissions uh, and also adaptation to climate change impacts. Uh, and also ways to develop synergies between mitigation and adaptation. Uh, I'm happy to let you know that students are uh, always interested in these topics, so I haven't had a problem uh, getting student engagement, especially when there are real projects for us to work on. Uh, thank you. And that concludes my presentation. Yeah, and thank you very much. And uh, uh, we have another presenter, uh, Dr. Heather um, Plazia from the Public Health and Recreation. Um, is Dr. Heather here? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the introduction. And I don't know how I'm going to follow that because I just put together a few slides, but I'd be happy to talk, talk to anyone more about how I integrate uh, sustainability into my curriculum, uh, both in this class and actually in all of my classes. Um, so I'm Heather Duplessier, and I am a uh, faculty or lecturer in the, uh, I teach uh, recreation and leisure courses in the Department of Public Health and Recreation. And uh, I was really excited to learn about the stipend opportunity um, uh, just an opportunity to showcase um, putting sustainability into how I uh, integrate it into my um, my courses. And I chose uh, Recreation 144, which is Nature and Cultural Resource Interpretation for Parks and Recreation, because I felt like this was a really natural fit. I also teach uh, ecotourism and sustainable tourism or sustainable recreation course, which is also a natural fit. And I actually talk about the Brundtland Report as well as the sustainable development goals and that whole history. But in this course, um, could you do the next slide? Uh, in this course, uh, students actually explore how to create an interpretive program focused on environmental conservation in order to create stewardship in the minds of the audience. So what they what students do is they work on uh, creating programs uh, uh, that the, in the real world. So similar to uh, Serena, the last speaker, a uh, real project based learning um, activities. And uh, they actually uh, last semester created interpretive media for the Earth Day events. Um, and so they they learn how to do interpretive media, interpretive brochures, um, and interpretive talks uh, focused on nature. And that's uh, and then they also engage in experiential learning activities while on field trips in the natural world. And they actually, uh, as part of the course, made uh, videos where they did interpretive um, uh, walks through uh, uh, parks uh, and, and just to showcase nature. And it's actually been proven, and that's what I actually did my master's uh, research project on, is how uh, interpretation uh, can lead to, um, uh, about interpretation about nature can actually lead to stewardship. So that's why I put these three um, uh, 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 sustainable development goals on here, uh, climate action, life on the end, and life below water, because those are all related to uh, nature and stewardship through interpretation. Uh, next slide, please. And then also another uh, really important concept in my, my this course is uh, cultural resource interpretation. And uh, so basically learning how to design a cultural resource interpretation program that combines experiential learning and reflection methods to provoke social responsibility and advocacy for indigenous communities and cultures, cultures around the world. And this is actually based on my master's research project that was published in the Journal of, Sust of Tourism and Leisure Studies, and I won an international award for. Um, so I showcase how this can be done. And then students actually meet with uh, leaders from indigenous communities and uh, NGOs uh, to, to discuss 
um, how to create these kind of programs and partnerships. And then they also explore ongoing research and documentary films to better understand and appreciate opportunities to build awareness and advocacy uh, with communities. So that's why I put these three sustainable development goals uh, on this slide, um, good health and well-being, partnerships for the goals and reduced inequalities because it has been shown and I did I learned in my research that um, when you uh, showcase, uh, uh, when you, you, you create a program around interpreting for cultural resources, it can actually uh, create advocacy for these communities and for these cultures. Um, so that's basically, the, that's my uh, course in a nutshell. Um, and I did actually have a question for the committee, uh, for uh, Bill and uh, Debbie. Um, so in terms of the green leaf, um, is that only for uh, classes that have received the stipend? No, no, not at all. That's uh, all the, the courses that were identified, unfortunately, in 2019 have it, um, as well as courses now that when you go through um, the curriculum, I think you can actually uh, select an option to say that your course is sustainable uh, or has sustainability okay. in it, um, and then it it'll it'll be identified that way as well. Um, but if if anything was created since 2019 and now and didn't select that that sustainability thing, it's not there. Um, but we will be doing another audit uh, very soon. Okay, I'd love to, you know, because all of my classes actually have a sustainability focus. Oh, and yeah, no, I know I'm missing a ton now. I, we had so many new courses that were developed since then. I know that we're missing a ton, so. <laughs> and, Debbie, you know, honestly, been... like, just like, just one more thing, just like uh, Serena explained, you know, building, uh, students really get excited when they're working on real life, like, projects that really matter. Um, and for the course that I'm actually teaching this semester in ecotourism and sustainable recreation, I've just partnered with a organization, Ethical Traveler, and they do a top 10 ethical destination list every year for developing countries that are exceeding standards in human rights, animal rights, environmental uh, initiatives, and um, and so the students are actually doing research for this organization and, and they're going to be acknowledged on the list in January. That's so this Could you send them really a link food. in the chat? I, I, I will send a, a set, yeah, I'll put a link to Ethical Traveler in the chat and the Ethical Destinations. And I'm, I'm just about to send all this information to uh, the SDSU uh, media to press yeah, because it's a it's a big deal, and I know that students really take agency, and you know they they um, giving them real life things like even doing the the doing the Earth Day posters for the different activities with Debbie, and she came and show she came and did a they did a showcase, and Debbie got to you know judge them, but she thought they were all great. They, they, they got really excited about that. So that's one of my recommendations. If you're, you know, bringing sustainability into your class, it's a great way to just, you know, there's so many um, needs and projects all around San Jose that you can implement. So that's my advice to everyone. Thank you. All right. Th thanks, Heather. Uh, I, I wish everyone had your enthusiasm on this. Um, so uh, while uh, Debbie is coming on uh, for the next segment, I just wanted to ask if anybody, since we're about halfway through, if anybody had questions of either Serena or Heather, uh, you can ask them now. Heather, I have a question. This is Heidi Isips from College of Business, but I also teach 100W in the College of Engineering. That's that in I hope that's got a green leaf next to it because every single one of those courses is completely sustainability focused. But um, Heather, my question to you is, are your courses, or especially the ecotourism course, cross-listed with the hospitality department that just came under the College of Business? Yeah, uh, no, I don't think they are. Yeah, because um, that's that department is called HTM, which is Hospitality, Tourism, and Management. And so it seems like such a win for students to know that, that uh, because it's a small department, so they can only put on so many classes. And to know that that class could be part of their mix would be so great. I would be happy to make an introduction to the department chair if you want. 
That would be great. I know that um, you know, in the we uh, Department of Recreation is 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 you know, well, Department of Public Health and Recreation, but uh, the ecotourism class has continued with uh, it has been uh, always with the recreation department. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I know that the hospitality um, department just moved into the College of Business there. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to, sure, I'd love to meet the chair there. Um, I also teach at uh, CSUMB in the, in the uh, College of Business in the Sustainable Hospitality Management Program. So that is I, so cool. What a match made in heaven. So I'm going to make that. Let's, let's take this offline, but great job. Beautiful work. Thank you so much, Heidi. I appreciate your, uh, your uh, acknowledgement. <laughs> Thank you. This, this is awesome. Unanticipated sin energies uh, within this, but that's that's the whole idea of, of sharing what we're doing, uh, is give, giving folks ideas. So thank you both. Um, Debbie, I think you're up. Yes, uh, very, um, okay, where, where is this going? <laughs> very quickly, I just wanted to share some of the resources that my office has for, for faculty who need, who need a little help. <laughs> um, we have little white papers on our website that talk about, you know, energy, greenhouse gas emissions and water usage, uh, waste, um, food, I think we have one, um, but they're all available here on our website. Um, uh, a resource from the UC and CSU offices, they developed this tool called Nextera, um, and it's um, it's it's all online, but it's it's a resource for faculty to incorporate climate change curriculum um, into their into their courses. It's it's been going on for a couple of years now, um, and it's a really awesome program. I encourage you to the website is right here. I encourage you to take a look. But it is developed jointly with the UCs and CSUs. Um, also from um, other departments on campus, the AS Transportation Solutions Department, they do an annual student survey of uh, commuting behaviors for the students. And I think they're also launching um, an annual staff and faculty a survey as well. Uh, I, I know they did it for this year, but I think it's gonna be annual moving forward, but they publish this data on their website um, and it goes back a long time. They've been doing this for a long time. It's actually, um, I've learned from talking to other CSUs that it's a very rare resource. <laughs> Lots of CSUs do not have the bandwidth to do this every year, but uh, our, our department does. And then Spartan Eats is our dining uh, operations here on campus, and they have um, a lot of resources on sustainability or what they're doing on campus for us as well. They actually just hired a sustainability manager for, they're actually, um, their umbrella company is Chartwells and they do a lot of dining for universities around the country, um, but they just hired a sustainability manager that's focused on um, the CSU's dining operations. So um, they're they're doing a lot of work and, and they have a lot of resources so you can contact them as well. And oh, also I didn't put it up here, but I do have um, a small grant available for students. So if you're looking, if you have students working on projects, uh, I have a, a grant that's, I, I think it's like $1,000 um, a year as, as, is the limit. And so they can apply for, there's no, there's really not a lot of parameters on, <laughs> for the grant other than it has to be sustainability focused. Um, and I mean, one, one person I just got a, a grant application for, she's doing uh, LGBTQI community research on um, um, emergency, like, or, oh gosh, I can't even say it right, <laughs> but uh, like climate related disasters. So it's like, it's really broad what you, what your students can apply for. But um, if, if you have students looking for money on a project that you've assigned them to, uh, you can go on my website and they can apply. It's a really very simple application. Um, and go ahead, Peggy. Hey everybody. So I want to, you know, remind everybody that we do work with the Center for Faculty Development. Um, they've been a very key supporter for our work. Um, and we are hoping that at some point there'll be enough of you who would want to share your research and work as we go on and we share our work with campus. And so that's something to think about. 
certainly as Center for Faculty Development offers workshops on teaching online and in person, it's always really important to think about, you know, how we can build sustainability into our classes. Um, and then a little more for our faculty and staff lounge. Um, so next slide, please. So uh, the next resource I want to talk to you about is a research guide that I've created to help you get some ideas about uh, curriculum you could embed. Can you click on the next slide, please? So um, this is one of the research guides. You could find it. There's a URL right there. I'll drop it into the chat when I'm done chatting at you. Um, but you can uh, find resources here available on campus see some uh, examples of um, sustainability that's been built into the curriculum. The network that um, Debbie was just talking about, the next network is one of the education networks that's listed on that link. In addition, I have just a variety of sources there. And so again, if you go to the library's homepage and click on um, see more research guides and then just type sustainability into the search box it'll bring it up but i will um, go ahead and include that um, in the chat can you click on the next link so here's some examples that you'll find on the page some of the networks etc so just gives you a brief overview and we're adding more content as we go along the next slide please and then um one of the things I've done, which I probably need to update on the sustainability related outcomes. Thank you, Debbie. Um, I, I went through everybody's, all the colleges or uh, student learning outcomes. And on this page, I pulled out several of them for you to consider, because that is one thing we're asking for the grant is, is you're designing the modules to embed uh, sustainability related learning outcomes. So we know how you're plugging it in. And you know you're making a firm, firm commitment in there, and then just a um, you know sustainability at the MLK Library just gives you lots of ideas of how to search this topic within the databases. There's lots of streaming video uh, links that you could take a look at. So lots of resources there for you. Um, next slide, please. Oh, before we move on, I just really quickly want to uh, remind everybody that. Um, this year, uh, we did choose a book all we could save for the campus reading program. And so this might be another thing that you consider. We just had a sustainability fair last week. Debbie and Bill and lots of people on campus and from the community came over to contribute. It's kind of like an Earth Day, but in fall, but it's a, every day is an Earth Day, right? Um, but there's lots of really great readings in the book. It's a collection of essays all written by women. So that's so important because, you know, we need to make sure that all kinds of perspectives get shared on this topic. So you might consider embedding that within your course and then designing some other assignments around it. Okay, thank you so much. And um, please be sure to reach out either to myself or to your library liaisons, because we're more than happy to help you find content to support any curriculum that you're designing for your classes. Thank you. Yeah, and now I would like to uh, invite more presenters to share their testimonials about uh, this uh, sustainability in their classes. So um, Professor John uh, de la Cruz, uh, are you here? I am. Yeah, so yeah, you can talk about your classes. Yeah, Hi, thanks point. everybody. Um, I'd like to share my screen. So that's going to like to knock your slide deck off, if that's OK. Yeah, go for it. You should be able to, to share now. OK, let's see if I can find this. OK, so you should all be able to see the screen. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, I'm John De La Cruz. I know some people in here, but not everybody. I teach advertising creative at the School of Journalism and Mass Communications, and I was approved. I received the, the stipend for the sustainability um, initiative. I think it was last year now. I don't know. Time just just seems to kind of sort of 
run ahead of me sometimes. Um, and I applied for it in, in lieu of um, a course I teach where I was already building sustainability issues. In. I try to bring sustainability into whatever I do anyway. I've been doing it for a number of years. Um, I regularly bring in uh, real life clients from um, mainly ocean sustainability, nonprofits into my, my courses. And for this one, what I was wanted to do was to adapt um, a competition brief that Rip Curl had set uh, for a student competition the year before. And I wanted to adapt it for my UX, user experience and user interaction design course that I teach for my undergraduates. And in this course, what they are doing is that they're learning, understanding um, the skills required to build out a user experience and a user interaction um, project. So they undertake human-centered design um, research approaches. They work through an entire process and eventually lots of design um, a digital product that is going to, to solve a problem for users. The nature of the brief that I set for them was going to enable them to, to take a deep dive into sustainability issues, starting from um, the United Nations guidelines and then looking at the, um, at the nearest coastal environment as well. So along the way, the aim was to teach these students the skills and the craft um, needed for UX and UI design, but at the same time to facilitate and enable them to uh, to understand the issues related to ocean and, co and coastal sustainability in as much depth as possible. It works two ways. I mean, in order to be able to design appropriately for, um, for a digital product, for example, as they do in this class, they need to understand the subject matter, the content that's gonna be um, included within the products that they design. So in this case, what they're having to understand is not just their user needs, but also ways to engage and activate um, a coastal community. And in some cases, a non-coastal community would be visitors to the coast to make them active participants in the, um, in the protection of the coastal environment. So I've got uh, the project actually, um, what I'll do is I'm gonna share this link afterwards in the in the chat. This takes you to my teaching portfolio and I've got lots of the project here um, in its first iteration. Uh, it shows lots of the, the materials I share with my students and it shows you some of the student work as well. Let me just tell you, right, that for this, um, for this particular course, I like to switch up the um, the semester long brief every year. With this one, I think I'm running it for the third time this semester because it's proven to be a super successful in terms of what the students learn, but also they love it, they enjoy it so much, you know, and they are getting so much out of it, not just in terms of craft development, but in terms of what they're learning, you know, um, in terms of sustainability. The idea is for them to be creative with the knowledge and not just design an app that's gonna be giving information. They have to do different things with it. And I'll run through it very quickly. I understand I've got five minutes left. So in this page, and I'll share the link so you can look at it in more detail, you can see the materials explains the, um, uh, the, the stuff I'm giving these students. This is their assignment brief here and it breaks it up into information and then what I'm expecting them to do. But the important thing that I introduced into this course can be seen on the Canvas page. Um, in the module section, um, I divide the course up into the, the different key areas that they're gonna be exploring. And down here, if you can see my cursor, embedded between UX and UI is a rip curl and sustainability module. And in here, I'm giving them links, hints and tips to help them to, um, to research and to understand coastal and ocean sustainability and the issues impacting it. These are starting points. All of these links are starting points that they then use as a springboard to help them to understand in further detail what they're supposed to, to know. So we're looking at coastal erosion, what rip curl as a brand are doing, water and the environment. I link them to a number of uh, documentaries. 
I show them what activist organizations exist globally, look at advertising examples, and then some apps that are already working in this field. They have an assignment to do. So embedded within the, the semester long assignment is a 10% um, report that will um, will help them to us to make sense of all of the material that they've been researching. So that's in there. And then I have the um, the actual assignment Spark page here. And then let's just have a quick look. Oh yeah, I've got a primer as well. As um, These are all Express pages on Adobe Express. So they're visual, they have links in them. They explain what I expect them to do. I link them to the module folder, for example, for the sustainability one. Um, and I'm providing them with a springboard for them to go ahead and research further. Then the students will uh, will create lots of um, a brief, uh, sorry, um, a report on Express uh, for sustainability, but then they'll do a UX and a UI um, breakdown of how the project has worked. So we've got this one here by Sydney. This one, this project actually won um, gold and best of show at the Silicon Valley Advertising Awards. And it breaks down their wireframes and so on and so forth, customer journeys, a style guide. And then we've got the, um, there's a demo, a prototype, a demo of the prototype here on video that you can have a look, look and see. But I really want to show you this one here, which was just phenomenal. The way that this, uh, that they, that they explored creatively what they could achieve was amazing because what they did was that they found that their target users wanted to help. They wanted to make sure that uh, our oceans, our beaches were clean, but they felt a bit awkward going on their own. So they took a hint from dating apps like Tinder and they created essentially a Tinder app for would-be um, environmental stewards. So, and it's all done in the tone of voice of a dating app. So there's no like sort of green agenda here, except that there is, right? So they're getting you, they're getting you. And it's, um, it's really awesome. And you've got, again, if you go to this link, you'll be able to see uh, the prototype itself, which I'll kind of play very, very quickly. I won't play the whole thing. This shows you how it works, different matches, just to get people to go and um, and do environmental things together. So that's there's great more to stuff, be seen there. I think that's me. I think I'm out of time, you guys. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but I'm going to put this link into the um, the chat here for you so you can have a look and see. And I'm running it again this semester and some great ideas already coming out. Um, I'm kind of expanding the agenda so that we're looking at um below the surface kind of pollution so oral pollution you know for um that's impacting whales and dolphins and their communication systems so it's something i'm super like so i'm excited to do every semester honestly and every semester we find new things what i would love to do is to partner up with the monterey uh, with the moss landing institute but i don't know maybe one day we will do so that's that's my project thank you john Yeah, and then uh, next one uh, is about uh, my own experience. Uh, I uh, used to teach uh, the um, hospitality leadership classes for the Department of Hospitality, Tourism, and Event Management. So in that course, um, I have uh, students, they work with uh, 11 companies and nonprofit organizations. Uh, those are the uh, restaurants and uh, food rescue organizations. And uh, they, um, the students, were uh, need to interview those organizations and identify one major issues in their um, food waste reduction process. And uh, they can uh, develop a, a plan to uh, work on how to reduce the uh, food waste uh, for those organizations. So um, that was. Um, uh, can you go to the next slide? So uh, we did the student um, project presentations and then we invite all the uh, organizations to join our uh, presentations and give feedback. So that is a collaboration with community uh, projects. 
So the students, they uh, earn a certificate from the community uh, service, community service based learning uh, project. So uh, that is uh, what I did in the past. And uh, this semester, uh, next slides. Uh, Okay, so I think we okay yeah so this uh, this semester uh, I teach another class for uh, marketing department, so uh, that is um, introduction to marketing. Uh, I have students they work as a marketing consultancy team uh, to develop a marketing plan for a local food rescue organization. Uh, they are a hundred home uh, food rescue organization. They need help with their uh, marketing campaigns to uh, have students develop prototypes, marketing materials to uh, increase the community's awareness on food insecurity and food waste. So our student groups, they develop uh, infographs or videos, uh, social media posts, and uh, uh, different type of contents and ideas to host uh, uh, community events or fundraising events for the nonprofit organization, and also recruit um, high school students or other uh, community members to volunteer for their um, food drives. So um, this is also a collaboration with the community uh, projects. So students, they uh, received a certificate, also win awards um, from the uh, project. And uh, let's see next. Uh, we may have next presenter um, is uh, um, Dr. Edith Kinney here. Uh, would you like to share your own, your experience? Uh, sure. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, Debbie has the link if you want. Uh, I, I think I requested access, but if you want, you can share your screen now if you have it up. Sure, I will here. Okay. All right. And I will be quick present. All right. Well, I am so happy to, um, to uh, uh, see our... Oh, for goodness sake, of course, when you do this, you can't get out of it. There we go. All right. Um, uh, my name is Edith Kinney. I am an associate professor in the Department of Justice Studies and also the legal action coordinator for um, the uh, SGSU Human Rights Institute. Um, and I was very um, excited about this because I, too, was trying to figure out how to better incorporate sustainability um, and environmental issues into my classes. Um, and while you may think that law... Um, uh, and justice, you know, maybe actually uh, inhibitors right, to uh, um, promoting a sustainable future. Um, uh, you know, the sustainable development goals um, incorporate just and ethical institutions. And I think we have a very important job in training our students um, to use their um, positions uh, to monitor, right, to monitor their communities, to understand what rights they have, and um, and do their best to protect them. Um, so uh, I have a background as a lawyer as well as um, um, work in kind of community organizing. And so we have um, a, a capstone uh, experience in the human rights minor that asks students to um, kind of get involved and do some applied work. I was uh, first attracted by the stipend, although I forgot to spend it. So uh, <laughs> you're welcome, whichever budget reabsorbed <laughs> that shit. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, but I was trying to think of something sustainable to buy and I couldn't bring myself to do it uh, with uh, um, Amazon. So um, our uh, JS171 class, Human Rights and Justice, introduces students um, uh, to uh, human rights and um, institutions and in pra practice, right? So policy on the books and praxis, how things actually get done and how we can use um human rights to mobilize in our communities for uh, change, to make sure that we have human rights that are respected, uh, protected, and fulfilled. So I incorporated uh, two different kind of modules. One, looking at the kind of broader kind of climate change um, and the, um, the role of youth activists in that movement and the kind of increasing threats to human security. Uh, so as I kind of explored the sustainability framework more, it really made sense from a foreign policy and a human rights perspective, um, because if we are dealing with migrations that are um, either forced by uh, 
uh, um, natural disasters or human-made disasters um, or conflict, uh, we are going to continue to see uh, um, a variety of displaced people and refugees. So that um, brings uh, the, this into the kind of law enforcement and policy making realm. Um, but I also wanted to center the voices of people whose communities are the most adversely affected by um, um, environmental injustice, um, including our black and um, indigenous communities, um, and especially people of color. Uh, I used to live in Oakland right by the 880 corridor, and um, one of the core lessons there is that participation in local planning is really important, and being involved in local politics is really important, because that's where these decisions get made. Um, so, for example, the decision to site a, a highway through a particular area or to create a pipeline through certain communities um, reflects uh, choices that we are making to uh, concentrate environmental harms um, both to the, the earth but also to the communities living nearby. Um, and I'm not sure if y'all have been paying attention or saw it in, in our busy and terrifying world, but ProPublica has a really um, um, kind of shocking uh, new graphic looking at how um, like cancer is <laughs> um, uh, uh, manifesting in, in various areas around um, uh, uh, different uh, companies and uh, chem chemical companies in um, Louisiana and the South. Um, so as our students are figuring out how they want to engage the world and getting a GE Upper Division SGSU Studies Area V credit, um, they were learning about different areas of the country, different indigenous histories there, um, and um, um, kind of migration patterns, right? So everyone could kind of identify how climate and environmental issues affected them or their ancestors. Um, and uh, I'm from Minnesota originally. So um, when I first gave this presentation, I had picked the, the water protectors as my kind of topic because I wanted to learn about it and because um, I bring my son and my dad, we go up to Canada and we've done that northern Minnesota, right, where it's beautiful, pristine wilderness and there is a tar pipeline going through there. So um, in our class, we look at kind of how this topic of water protectors has very, uh, very much you know, illustrates the importance of attention to intersectional environmentalism and how um, histories of racism and um, colonialization and settler colonialism have displaced people and caused the kind of completely foreseeable crises that we have today. Um, and another um, angle from the kind of law side is to uh, note that um, there are threats to uh, basic civil liberties and basic rights, like the First Amendment right uh, to protest or to assemble with other people. Um, and state and non-state actors are collaborating to criminalize protests, including pipeline um, actions that have, uh, direct actions that have been proven very successful in attracting public attention to these um, issues. So as um, students kind of work through these challenges, they're able to see that we all play a role in both kind of creating the problem from our consumption habits to the policies that we endorse, um, and we all have a play role in um, um, uh, the solution, right? Um, so uh, we have a, a various kind of water um, assessment activities. We talked about the flood that happened here a few years ago because um, many of the students had been impacted directly. Um, and I think we don't think so much about human rights as issues right in our own backyard, even though we are constantly facing them. Um, so I found that this is a really helpful framework um, it also links us to so many different uh, like-minded and um, uh, folks across campus who are trying to kind of engage our students and make this real to them. Um, and uh, uh, just, a, just a plug here, if you have students who are interested in exploring kind of sustainability in a variety of dimensions, um, I encourage you to um, send them along to me. I'm Edith Kinney at sjsu.edu. Uh, and um, we work with... Um, a variety of community-based partners and policymakers, and our students have ended up in some um, offices working on policies that actually uh, improve the health and safety and sustainability of our communities. So if you have students that are interested in this, or you yourself are um, curious about uh, work uh, with other people uh, on uh, kind of 
uh, public planning and um, public policy issues, please join us at the Human Rights Working Group and the Human Rights Institute. I put the link there. And we'll hope Debbie will share that also in um, when she shares the slides. So uh, that's my very quick presentation. If anybody wants to talk about Minnesota, wild rice, or other sustainability issues. Uh, last time, I think Kathy Wong Lao's son had gone to be part of the protest. So she, her presentation also related to these issues. But um, I, I'm also uh, considering uh, how we might develop um, faculty led programs that have kind of shorter classes like alternative spring breaks to look at some of the kind of climate change issues that, around our own country um, and, and develop partnerships with local community groups um, so that we can have ongoing uh, efforts to monitor and improve our communities. Well, thank you, Edith. It's so inspiring actually to hear you all talk about what you're doing because it gives me hope for the future that uh, we've got such uh, passionate and involved uh, faculty in, uh, in, in sustainability. Um, so do anyone have questions for either Edith um, or John or um, Yinghua? Okay, you guys did such an awesome job. Uh, so next we're gonna go to Peggy uh, to do our little SDG uh, exercise. So you've heard several of the speakers talk about the UN Sustainability Development Goals. And what we really like about that is earlier, you know, we talked to you about the definition of sustainability. The UN has looked at the whole picture and they divided up into 17 goals. And of course, within that, there's multiple goals, but there are some really nice ways to look at sustainability and more important actions that we can take. And so what I'd like to invite everybody to do now is if you would go to the top of your screen or wherever you have um, uh, this symbol and click on view options and then uh, select annotate for the very next screen. Bill, can you switch, or Debbie, could you put it on the next screen? What we'd like you to do is select um, a stamp and next to the sustainability goals that you may consider including for your course that you're thinking about, if you would um, put a stamp next to the goal. And so, of course, you know, you're not <laughs> compelled to use this, but we just want to use this activity as a way to get everybody thinking about what might work for you. Oh, there goes one heart. And I think we could, we could all agree that we are, we're all interested in number four, quality education, correct? So... You know, that one is kind of a given for us, but what else would go along with your courses? And, you know, I'm sure as you go through the process and if you decide to apply for the grant, You'll have more than one. You'll, you know, use two, three, or four, whatever you think, you know, applies. And then what you discover as you're working with your students and talking with them about, you know, sustainability and the actions we could take. Sorry, so I'm not, I'm not able to do this, but that's okay. I <laughs> oh, do you want to? Do you want to put it in the chat? Do you want to put the numbers that you're interested in if you can't find uh, the marking tool? Yeah, I can't find the marking tool. I could. That works too. I just want to know, this is pretty awesome and we are now whatever, two years something into this pandemic and I'm just figuring this out now. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to figure it out if you don't mind. Well, how do I, where do I go? Not on the reactions. Um, Go to the view thing or view yeah, options. You the options when you put that down, annotate is one of the options. It's the third one on my list. And then when you open that up, you'll have a little banner and stamp. If you if you hover over stamp, you can choose the stamp that you can oh, then mark. Did you see it, Anu? Yes, thank you so much. 
Oh. That is so cool. Okay, now I have to see if I can. Okay, got it. Got it. Thank you very much. I too was compelled. Now I've got stars all over here, and I'm realizing <laughs> it would have been easier just to say which one don't. Does which one you don't want to do? <laughs> would anybody like to share uh, which ones they are thinking about? Um, yeah. Well, so definitely one of mine went to climate action because that's been my passion. I've been giving talks on climate uh, reality for the last four years, and it's uh, it's uh, something that I'm going to probably be devoting the rest of my life to, whether I'm here at San Jose State or not. Yep. Yes. And, uh, I'm in marketing business, so number nine, industry innovation, infrastructure as part of product development, entrepreneurship, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Vivek. So important for our business area. Yeah. Anybody else? I mean, like, you know, I have had students work on sort of, you know, the zero hunger because food is a, uh, is, a, is a basic necessity. So that, and then actually this semester, I have someone working on health and well-being. And obviously quality education is, applies to all of us. Um, but uh, an industry innovation, as Vivek said, I mean, I also, I teach entrepreneurship, so that's super important. Then I have a team this semester working on energy, on solar energy. So that's sort of number seven. And so I think you're right. So many of these can apply for our work and mm -hmm. our student interest in what the research said and things that they're learning. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you for everybody for being willing to take a minute to think about you know, our goals, our goals for our students and what we could share with them. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Peggy, for doing this. And Debbie, you want to wrap up? And thank you for showing. Sure. <laughs> yes. As long as I don't know how to clear this. Is there, uh... you, have, you have a lot of love there, Debbie. <laughs> it looks like a toddler went through this. Okay. Yeah. I will figure that out after. <laughs> uh, I, well, I just want to share this. Um... I don't know what happened here. Oh, no. We're still annotating. Hold on. How do we stop this? Clear all. Uh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Somebody knows what they're doing. All right. Uh, this is the the stipend. We call it a stipend here because we've called it that forever, but it's technically will be professional development funds. Um, there are ten awards available, as you can see from from our from the previous slide. Four of them were only awarded last semester, so it really is. Um, we didn't, we just didn't get enough applications. So if you think you don't have a great idea, you might, you might, and, or a fully fleshed out idea, um, but it, it fits in with the theme. I, I encourage you to apply anyway, um, because the last couple of times we actually had, Edith, stop drawing. Uh <laughs> Dude, I, I can't, I have two mi mice and I can't figure out how to turn it off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> You give a, an old dog new tricks and they're going to try it. Sorry, Debbie. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. Sorry. Um, I encourage you to apply for this anyway. Um, the deadline for this is November 18th, which is right before Thanksgiving break. But to be perfectly honest, we could extend it. If, we, if you need a little more time, please get in touch with one of us, either Bill, Peggy, or I, and let us know. Um, but uh, yeah, last time we didn't have enough applications, so we we have all this money to give away. We'd love to give it away to people who want to put sustainability in their courses. Um, and it's a really easy application. Like, this is it. Um, so if you have any questions, please please let Bill know. Bill Bill's retiring. He needs all the questions. Uh <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Debbie. I appreciate that. But um, no, if, you know, please get your, you know, don't wait, get your application. And now uh, mm -hmm. we do want it by the 18th because we hope to be able to actually get you your stipend before the end of the year. So, um, you know, if, if, if it delays, then uh, you're not going to get your stipend, at least in this year. So um, it's up to you, but, uh, you know, it, be, it benefits you to get that in right away. And I just want to add, um, it's really important to demonstrate in your answers, like how you're changing your curriculum and also include the changing sustainable learning objectives, yeah. because we want to be able to track that and see see the changes. Yeah. So Learn, please remember to include those. Yeah. 
late learning objectives are very important. In fact, we don't accept everybody who applies because of that, you know, because it doesn't appear as part of that learning objective. So please make sure you do that. All right, any final questions before we wrap up? We're 10 minutes before the deadline, but we didn't want to keep you that long anyway. So questions going once, going twice. Did someone uh, drop the link to the application in the chat? That would be helpful. Oh, uh, this, this whole Maybe slide. Maybe it's elsewhere. I'll send it out to everyone who registered oh, for okay. this today, including all the other links that were in the chat and anything relevant. <laughs> And Debbie, when you send this link out, that'll include all the chat questions and yeah, comments? yeah. I'm I'm printing out the chat as we okay. speak and making sure we're including all those links. Awesome. But will it include all the annotations? I screenshotted that just for you. No, <laughs> <I didn't. laughs> and it's it's okay if we continue to because I got the I got the notification of uh, being accepted uh, rather late. So, but it's okay if I continue to use you know um incorporate sustainability next semester as well right yeah i i would highly recommend you talk to heidi wong though because there have been some um troubles <laughs> i'm i'm trying not to look at you edith but uh <laughs> no about, i about i i do not understand the business calendar yet i refuse i, I don't to either it. but you do have to spend your money within the I believe the fiscal year, but we can determine which which year it is for the the award. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, uh, email Bill and I, and then we will get you in contact with Heidi to sort all that out. Okay. Yeah. yeah I didn't realize what it's. Yeah, that's true. I applied, but I didn't uh, like it. <laughs> I didn't look into. So it has to be used for something that's related to the course no 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 it, it's professional development fund so you can use it for like conference fees even um i think you're you're able to we confirm someone asked if they could use it to hire a student assistant and we're like yeah mm -hmm. heidi confirmed oh, yes oh. yeah oh by the way for y'all who may want to hire student assistants there is i'm not sure it's kind of buried in the messages i've been getting but there's this like it so it looks like it should read leap but it's l-a-e-p it's like learning assisted employer something about employment related stuff right but there you can get like 20 bucks an hour for a uh, uh, undergraduate um research assistant for next spring so and how can i get it for next spring or do the i have to have the person today sorry the application is due today oh shit Are those... is everything due today, today? everything <laughs> is due today what is due today sorry what is due today peggy let, let me find it in my email and I'll put the link in your in the chat. Hang on. Wow, this is the most important thing that I just happened to ask. Oh, someone someone did there. Oh. Oh, um, Edith, thank you. That's the main program, but that's for the institutions. There's one internal one. I think it's coming from the provost's office. There it is. So great. Thank you. So what is this? Sorry. Just... This is the this is the internal link for that competition. So it's due today at five o'clock. So y'all know what you're doing today. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in, in the next three and a half hours, yeah. Well, this is for student researchers. Okay. So this is okay. different from the this is different. This is the Office of Research trying to get, but but in order so you could use your professional development, your funds for professional development, and somebody else can pay for your student. I see. Okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. The students, the funds are for spring 2023. So to hire a student for spring 2023 is what the, the application? One, the one that I got? It's for spring. No, the one no, I'm sorry. I brought this up because you were saying you were going to use your your sustainability stipend for students. And I said, hold up, you gotta yeah. pay yourself first. Someone <laughs> told me, but I just decided to give it back to the institution because that's the way I am. So I got it. I got the <laughs> grant. I got the grant for this semester, right? Year. So but I haven't used so but if I want so for using it, I can use it next semester as well or do i have to yeah it's it's for the fiscal year 
or for the fiscal year. Okay, so yeah. I can use it this semester or next semester for professional development. Correct. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Otherwise, I'm also capable of not, you know. <laughs> okay, have we, have we exhausted this or any other question? <laughs> I, I have a question. So yeah. when we are applying on this one, so uh, if we are actually incorporating it already in more than one courses or something like that, do we pick only one class and show it like that or a new class? Can, can you guys provide a little bit of information about the number of classes or, or how do we actually, you know, distinguish? There's nothing stopping you from applying for more than one class, but uh -huh. uh, please make it different applications. Um, okay. Yeah, um, but the, I, I mean, Bill, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that the purpose of the stipend was to help people develop it if you haven't already developed it. So if you are developing a new course, please use that one to develop or to apply. Um, so new course meaning, so I already have a course, hopefully, that I will be teaching analytics for social good, which actually focuses a lot of the UN SDGs, or that's the idea, if I'm able to get it, you know. Uh, yeah, and yeah, again, and we wanted to to because we know that you don't get paid to develop a new course. It's like you're it's an idea that you have that you want to teach. And so this is like I you can see it as motivation for continuing to do that. So if you are developing a course, please please apply okay. for the stipend. Yes. And it sounds like you have a great course and I'd love to to read it. I'd love to take it. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> if you want to learn about human trafficking, healthcare, disasters, and how you can actually as a business student help that. Okay. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> so just just be aware that you know it, this this has to be something new that you're doing, you know, uh, and 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 that it's not something that you're being paid to do. So, and I think that's important because if uh, you're being paid to develop a new course, that's then that really doesn't qualify for the stipend, if that's clear. This, this is to supplement you, you know, for something you're not being paid for. Okay, any other questions? Well, I just have a comment, and that is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the provost is helping us, helping fund us to pay for these stipends. Yes. So, you know, the provost, we have the support of the provost to embed sustainability into our curriculum. As, and as I mentioned at the beginning, if uh, you uh, can uh, incorporate sustainable transportation, we do have another source, uh, you know, of, of, of funding. So the Mineta Institute. So that's also on the table. So, you know, you can do either one, obviously, but um, just get your application in one way or another so that we can take a look at it. So on the same lines as Yingwa, uh, I teach you know introduction to marketing, and also the advanced level for the MBAs. So, you know, I was thinking of including a project just like you did, Yingwa. So, would that qualify for stipend, or that will be just an incremental adder? Or I have to develop a brand new course around it. It, it should develop. It should represent a a a significant part of your course. Okay. It can't be like just one one assignment. Yeah, we, we want to see it that it's been reflected in the student learning outcomes of the right. course. So right. hopefully if you if you teach this course again next semester, it's going to be like an embedded part of your course that you're yeah. incorporating sustainability. Yeah. And it so, doesn't have to be a new course. It definitely could be a course you're already teaching, but if you're adding in sustainability, this definitely applies. You can definitely apply for, for the stipend. Yeah, yeah. So for example, uh, in my intro to marketing class, uh, that is a student uh, term project. So that's accounts for 15% of their grades. Okay. And it's part of the student objectives. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Learning your job. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? You guys are a very inquisitive group, and I appreciate that for all the questions. Thanks. And input, so. Thank you all very much for, for coming and uh, have a great rest of day and weekend. And uh, we look forward to receiving your applications. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.